gentlemen, once again, welcome back to Is Moolah TV. As promised, I uh, definitely didn't want to leave you guys hanging with, you know, almost pretty much like showing like braggadocious my, <laughs> my 20 plus leagues and, hey, here's what I'm doing right. Um, and I help you guys out too. So definitely wanted to drop another video. Um, within 24 hours before uh, the first game of the week kicks off Thursday night. Um, so tomorrow is going to be a big game. But you see, yeah, 20 plus leagues. So I'm literally giving you the inside scoop. Um, there's a lot of preparation that goes into it. But at the end of the day, I really try to just keep it simple um, as best I can. Um, that way it stays fun. I don't feel overwhelmed. And, you know, I like, you know, continue to do what I do. Um, so, yeah, each week, uh, like I said before, uh, make sure if you're in, I would say, more than like five leagues, definitely turn off those push notifications. You just go straight into your, if you have an iPhone, just go straight into settings. Um, notifications and just turn that off for ESPN so you can just enjoy the game um, as you want to without you know being super worried about how your player is going to perform because at the end of the day these guys are just human beings just trying to do their job so <laughs> I just can't put too much pressure on them but uh, uh, yeah it's fun to be fun tomorrow Patriots and Steelers you know I won't be tuning in uh, that game is going to be terrible in my opinion uh, I don't believe uh, Kenny Pickett's going to even be playing uh, Patriots are scoring to and put up a touchdown on offense, but I will still say one thing that will be impressive to watch is the Patriots defense. They've been holding um, teams to under 10 points all year um, so far, which has been pretty remarkable. And, you know, we'll see if uh, Najee Harris um, and Jalen Warren, you know, can really pick up the slack on offense and run the football effectively. But yeah, getting right into it. I already made, sorry guys, I already made these picks um, and I picked up those guys, you know, um on waiver and stuff like that so i'll still go over those with you but during the day you know i like to just get that stuff done to secure my team's uh, best opportunity to win and i figured hey last thing i want to do is wait to the end of the day not have my team set up and i'm scrambling live on twitch trying to really figure out my strategy uh, especially if other people is like you know on it paying attention they might pick up the players that i want before me so i usually get that done um you know throughout the day when I can or something like that on lunch break um, to kind of just like knock that out real quick. But uh, I'll still show you that. So don't worry. I'm not like keeping secrets from you guys. Right. So but I just want you to know kind of my theory behind each pick. So we're jumping off right into it. Let's get right to it. Game of football. Right. We got that number one seed. Uh, see if I remember some things from yesterday. Right. Home tool. Um, number one seed. View full standing. We're 10 and one clinched. OK. Um, so that's, that's super exciting. So still one game behind, or oh, still one game ahead, excuse me, to clinch that number one seed, but really, really good regardless. Um, so here's what we're doing here, right? Um, we got a pretty good matchup um, against Team Johnson, you know, so not taking anybody here for granted. Um, but we got Brock Purdy. I'm definitely going to put him as my starter. I think I had two in last week. Um, he's going up against Tennessee, you know, but I have him starting in my other league, so I'm not too worried about it. As we talked about in the last video, I think in this this team game of football, we had um Calvin really right pretty much have a tryout day at that wide receiver two spot. He wasn't successful there. Debo had a big night um, against Philadelphia on the road, so he's earned his spot and locked at that wide receiver two spot. Um, so this is what I'm doing each week, guys. Especially on Wednesdays, this is crucial. Um, what you want to do is. With each player, right, look at the quarterback, you know, click on their name, scroll down, see what they've been producing, okay? Check the matchup, okay? Check the matchup. Who are they playing, okay? Oppo opponents ranked their 20th ranked defense in the National Football League, right? As you see, Atlanta is ranked first. Their defense, Carolina, uh, ranked sixth. Right. So even though the defense is the offense is struggling, their defense is still pretty good. Um, so I always like to take a look at that. Right. Um, you know. To a, he's playing against Tennessee. That's a pretty good matchup. He's projected to do about 17.9. I mean, Brock Purdy has just been on such a tear. I like the matchup with him versus the Seahawks. I'm going to move forward with that. Christian McCaffrey hasn't let me down all season. Going to continue there. Ricard White. Doing his thing. Chris Olave, same thing. He's going to be against Carolina. I expect him to get open and Derek Carr to find him. Detroit playing against Chicago. 
they've been struggling all season. Um, what's ironic, though, about the Laporta and Jared Goff situation is that normally um, when they play against, you know, tougher teams, he has bigger games. Let me just see if I'm right on that. Green Bay, pretty solid team. Big game, okay? We got another conference matchup here in New Orleans. Big game, okay? Um, Kansas City didn't do too well. That was the opening game of the season. Uh, but Atlanta, you know, we just saw top rank defense, big game. Um, and he did put up a good, pretty good showing against Carolina, but he's going to stay there at that t- a starting tight end position. As you see, I don't even have a tight end to back him up, right? So he's just been that reliable all season, and he's been healthy, which is very important. Now, the key thing that I did here, guys, as you saw in the last video, the Cowboys defense went negative three, and now they're playing against Philly, Okay. I expect Philly to put up points, so I'm not going to start them as my starting defense. But what I did do is I went to here, add a player, okay, and this is where I pretty much got a defense. Okay, so I looked at the defense, and in in my league, uh, the Jets defense was available against Houston, um, Jaguars defense available against Cleveland, right? But the Texans defense was available against... The Jets, we all know offensively, the Jets have had their struggles. They're projected to do an 8.5. If they hit that, man, they have an opportunity to exceed that. But that's a really good um, a really good point, point spread right there. So I'll take that over a 5.6. You know, it's a close game. Anything can happen uh, when facing my opponent. So I always want to make sure I maximize uh, my team's success. Even on defense, it's the little things that count sometimes, and that can really go a long way for your squad. Um, Justin Tucker, reliable kicker, um, he'll stay there at 8.6, but I usually kind of plug and play those defenses week over week, and once again, check the matchups. It's very, very important that you do that, uh, because sometimes it's not always going to make or break your, your, your game or your season, but it could be the difference in a football game for you. Um, I also have Jake Ferguson, Dalton Shorts available here. These are really good options too, as a backup tight end. Um, I don't, I don't even think, of, I don't even think about the fact that I don't have a backup for him. But right now, I don't, I don't necessarily need one. Um, I'm not gonna drop the Cowboys defense because you know they can be, they can pretty much shut up. I could probably drop them since we're getting into the playoffs and they have a pretty tough schedule and road ahead. Um, but it really would only depend on you know um, the health of Sam Laporta for me to take him away from that. A tight end spot um, but that's pretty much it there but yeah so i got um like i said i'm keeping that running back trio going mccaffrey white mix in there um as i said before i can make it however pretty i want you know if i want to move ricard down to the flex i can do that that way it's like 15.2 um you know because you can put a tight end running back or receiver at that flex spot um just so those points are balanced but um, however you want to do it is fine by by me um, just have fun with it. And that's that. So that's where we stand. Uh, I could see if it's this week. It's got to be this matchup right here. Yeah, so you can see with those moves that I made, right, I'm projected to do 134. Um, and it, the goal for me and my team um, is 130. Okay, so we're 4.5 points above that. A lot of that has to do with the defense. If any, if I ever projected to do 130 or above, that means I made the right decisions. Um, so that's my goal going into one, t- one each week is to aim for that 130 mark. Uh, looks like he, you know, either he's sleeping or he might not be paying that much attention. Team Johnson, IR, Michael Thomas have been out for a few weeks, along with Mark Andrews, um, Isaiah Pacheco. We know he's questionable with a shoulder contusion. And uh, the, reason, the way I found that out, because I have him in a few of my other leagues, you just click on his name. It's not only going to show you his actual season stats, it'll show you his projections, um, and then it'll also show you his stats. Uh, but then if you scroll down a little bit more, recent news, Isaiah Pacheco sounds like um, right here, okay? What he missed Wednesday's practice due to his shoulder contusion. So uh, for me, you know, he's a tough physical running back. So he uses his shoulder, he lowers his shoulders a lot. So to have a shoulder contusion, you know, it's not like a broken shoulder or anything like that. But I know that's going to affect him. That's going to be on his mind um, and will affect his running style. I, I you know, expect the Kansas City Chiefs to really utilize Clyde Edwards, Elaire, and even McKinnon out the backfield uh, this week against the Buffalo Bills, but not somebody that I will start depending upon my running back depth. Um, but 134 projection, we're sitting at that number one spot. Playoffs have been clinched. I like our chances going into this week. So uh, pretty good and solid picks there. 
and we can move on. So next up, hope you guys are learning something too. Definitely feel free to you know drop in the chat. Uh, if you guys have any comments, any questions, anything you want to go over, uh, if you want me to slow down, speed up, <laughs> I'm here for you guys um, as well. So don't don't be shy um, to drop a like in the chat. All right, so here we go. Good call, ref. It's my other league. Uh, we'll check. You know, I know we, we did this in the last video, but we're sitting at the number two spot right now, tied for first place. Um, I'd love to take a look and see who he's playing against. Let's see, Egg. Okay, Egg's Eagles and Icons. Okay, his matchup is against team number 24. Okay, so it looks like he has a, a pretty good game. Team number 24 pack, um, eight. So it looks like a Kobe fan here, potentially. Um, you know, so, you know, if you guys, you don't know, you know, Kobe Ward number eight and 24. Uh, but it looks like it's only about uh, 11, but not even about nine points right there, differential. So um, he's got a fight on his hands. I hope that Team 24 could pull up the upset for me so I can clinch that number one seed. But, you know, focusing on, on my team, um, I'll get right to it. So we got Jared Goff starting, right? Sam Howell's on a bye week, you see, bye. So I put him on my bench. Jared Goff gets the nod, and I do like the matchup with um, Goff against the Chicago Bears, 18th ranked defense. Okay, um, let's see. Yeah, so the a few changes that I did make. Tony Pollard, I expect him to get um, some some solid points on the ground. He's projected to do 7.1. Um, Kyron Williams coming off back-to-back of -back -back big weeks. He's projected to 18.5. And if you were watching my live stream on Instagram, you would see I actually picked the Rams to beat the Ravens um, going into this week. The Rams are hungry. They're 6-6. Six and six, So I know K-Dub's going to run the football as hard as he can to help put his team in the best chance to win. Zay Flowers, I, you know, I, I did have to bench Garrett Wilson, although he's projected to do two point, uh, point two points higher than Zay Flowers. I put him on a bench because he doesn't have a quarterback. Um, you know, that can get him the football, unfortunately, um, you know, consistently week over week. You know, we had Zach Wilson that was really finding him, you know, in those first couple of weeks. Um, and then here from the Giants on, you know, pretty simple, but 0 0.9 and 17.4, 8.0. Um, you know, I, I don't really see um, I, I could see him getting the football. But I think with Baltimore going coming off of a bye that they're going to try and get the ball in Zay Flowers hands. He's a, he's one of the fastest um, skill players on that team right now. Um, so you definitely want to get him in there and, and show what he can do. So I put him there. Uh, bench Garrett Wilson, taking a chance here. But once again, you know, tied for first place here in this league. I already clinched the playoffs. I don't really have much to lose, but a theory. Okay. And my philosophy and also my intel. But at the end of the day, I have 20 plus leagues. I feel confident in what Zay Flowers can do. Um, he's showing me he can be that guy. Um, yeah, I had a couple of slow weeks here, but look at that. 23 points. Okay. And he also had a, he would have had a bigger game against Cincinnati. He had one touchdown that was called back. All right, so this is going to be a big game um, for the Ravens to show that they are the number one team in the AFC because Jaguars would have took that number one seed last night if they would have won. So now with the Ravens coming up, it's going to be a really good game. So I'm excited to see how that one shakes down with that interconference uh, matchup. But yeah, nonetheless, uh, and then for tight end, uh, McBride is also on a bye week. Unfortunately, you know, he had a 20-point game, but now he's on a bye. You know, these guys got to rest. I get it. So Evan Ingram, he's going to be playing with the backup quarterback um, uh, that we saw Trevor Lawrence go down. I mean, in some leagues, they're showing that Trevor Lawrence is actually questionable. I mean, if he's playing, that ankle, if it's an ankle injury, is going to have to be heavily taped and will limit his mobility. But regardless, I don't have Trevor Lawrence as a quarterback on this team. So if whoever's throwing him the football, I just need them to get him the football. <laughs> and I'll be a happy camper. But projected to do 11.5, which I really am excited about. You know, 10 points, I would say, per skill position. Um, for tight ends, 10 points or higher is really good. That's the target number for for um, for for tight ends. You know, for your receivers, you really want them at this, like, 15 or higher mark. Running backs, you want them, like, you know, in between at 15 or 20. And you really want your quarterbacks, you know, pushing 20 a game, right? That's, that's the elite level. Uh, that 18 to 20 points per game out for, for a, a fantastic day. I want to see, I would love to have 20, 20, 20, you know, between 15 to 20 here, um, 10 to 15 here, my flex anyway, from, you know, 15 to 20, uh, honestly for a flex, I'm, I, I'm content with 10, but 10 is like the minimum, you know what I mean? 
Um, so I definitely want them between like 12 and 15 points on average for my flex. Um, defense, you you know, if you want to have a game-changing defense, anything over 10 is extremely good. But I would say between like 6 and 8, it's pretty darn good. If you got a defense that's getting you 6 to 8, it's really, really good consistently. And 8 to 10 is phenomenal. Um, kickers as well. You know, it's going to be a kicking game, right? Harrison Bucker, uh, Kansas City versus Buffalo. I don't, I don't, you know, there might be, it could be high scoring, uh, which will still be a lot of PATs, or it could be low scoring. And it's going to come down to the kickers. So regardless, your kicker's going to get worked. Um, 8.5 is phenomenal. Um, and I don't know if it's like the bonus points of this year's fantasy football league, but kickers are getting like 14 points, 12 points in some leagues. So, you know, they get you like three or four PATs and make, you know, 40 or 50 yard. You're looking at a double digit kicker, which is like a game changer. Um, you know, if, if one of your skill guys goes down or underperforms, kicker can make or break your, your, your game. And that's what happened in one of my leagues. It came down to my kicker from Cincinnati. Um, he missed one, then he he missed he missed the field goal, then made like five kicks after that, uh, four PATs and another field goal. So, and, and we won. Uh, my team won. So definitely don't count them out. Um, you know, if you have a kicker here that's like showing up at six or kick on a buy, just go ahead and add player. You know, look for that look for that kicker that's getting that A plus. Who's gonna have a good week? What what game do you think is gonna be tough? Where it's gonna come down to kicks, right? Talib Bass, also available. Can't go wrong with either one of these kickers. 8.2. Going to get their money's worth, okay? Dustin Hopkins, right? They got a banged-up quarterback banged-up quarterback room, um, you know? So that that's – and they're going up against Jacksonville defense. I don't I don't see the Cleveland Browns scoring a bunch of touchdowns, but I think Joe Flacco will get him in field goal range, right? So that's an opportunity for you there. So that's how you got to kind of look at this. From an analytical standpoint, you know, who's going to be playing what, right? Interconference matchup, um, what what team is like on the in the hunt still, right? That kicker's going to be motivated too because he knows it could come down to him. So um, that's how I look at it, and that's how I pick my kickers. Buccaneers defense, I mean, here is um, they're playing against Atlanta. You know, I, I, I can honestly see if there's a better defense. They're projected to do 6.1. I feel like I made this mistake last time too. I didn't even take a look at the defense that's available. Um, looks like we got the Ravens defense against the Rams. I don't think they're going to be able to stop them much. Um, like I said, the Ravens are hungry, but we got the Packers and, uh, going up against the Giants offense and then the Texans going up against the Jets offense. So I'm going to go with the Texans here. So I'm going to add the Texans and we're just going to plug them in and I'm going to go ahead and drop the Buccaneers defense. Um, yeah, continue. Uh, yeah, we'll make that live on Twitch for you guys to see. So that's going to bump me up even more. 8.5. Like I said, I'll keep the Cowboys defense on standby, right, in case they make it and whatnot. So, and now I can take a look at my matchup and see where we stand. So 122, right, not super high, um, you know, not, not, not the best, but, you know, we still have a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, from the 94.7 that my opponent's projected. He also probably isn't paying attention. Trevor Lawrence did go down. He's projected to zero points. So once he makes that edit and correction, this will be a much closer game. Um, so this is when I would definitely go back and take another quick peek to see if I'm missing any points here. If I'm leaving anybody on the on the table that could definitely you know boost my team. Um, I think the only thing I see here is just Austin Eckler at 17.4. But man, I mean... I, I I literally like I said before, but I, I I did pull the trigger and benched him like three weeks in a row, under ten. Last week under five. I mean I get it. You're going up against solid defenses, and he may find some some holes and lanes to run against Denver. But at this point, I'm going to take James Cook off a bye week, and hopefully he can navigate through the Kansas City defensive front, which will also be tough. But I I don't know. I don't know if I give him. Austin Eckler, a fourth chance after the Chargers just won 6-0 last week. He's got to show me that, you know, they still they still want to play football up in L.A. And they're not just throwing in a towel, um, which it feels like they're doing right now. And then let's see for a quarterback. I like Jared Goff in this matchup of 15, projected to 15 points. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't make me sing. So I just got to see, uh, is any other quarterback available? Kyler Murray, no. John, Matthew Stafford, no. Kirk Cousins, he's injured, no. 
Jake Browning, 16.2 against Indianapolis. I mean, he's coming off of a fantastic showing against Jacksonville. This would be a risk. I mean, 26.66. I mean, the guy was low-key. Um, I'm not going to say a magician, but he was efficient. 32 for 37, 86.5 percentage, 354 yards passing on the road with an overtime victory. I mean, it's a risk, right? I mean, like I said, I still like Jared Goff going up against the Bears defense. But this is a, this is someone that I would definitely monitor. As the Indianapolis, as the uh, you know Cincinnati is, is pretty close, right? Pretty darn close. We can take a look at the standings here. Um, let's take a look here. AFC Bengals are six and six. Yeah, they're fourth in the AFC North, not where they want to be. But this is an opportunity for him. You know, like I said, it's five weeks left. They went out. They go eleven and six. Okay, they could definitely shake up. You know they could definitely shake up the uh, the AFC standings and primarily um, the AFC North. Um, they're going to be in the same division as the Ravens, so it could come down to those two because we know the Steelers aren't healthy and the Browns aren't healthy. So if they went out, they have an opportunity to put that to be to put some pressure on the Ravens and be in that second spot in the AFC North. Let's see who they're playing. Colts, yeah, they're coming off of a big win in overtime against the Titans. They got the Vikings who are struggling. With Joshua Dobbs, they got the Steelers, same division. That's going to get brownie points there. They got the Browns, they get that win. That's brownie points, and they got the Chiefs. Um, so I, maybe I would say one, two, three, four, five. I could I could see them going three and two, losing to the Colts and losing to the Chiefs. But I would expect them to win these three games right here. But you know, but the, don't don't be surprised if they, if they win both these games. And it might be, a, you know, it might be a little bit much for me to say that, go out on a limb and, you know, have that much confidence. But uh, let me take a look and see who my backup quarterback is. It's Sam Howell. You know, this guy, can he can sling the rock. Like I said, they just can't win games. Look at this. Look at these numbers. 17, 17, 19, 20. I mean, who, who wouldn't have him as a backup? But I would say definitely, definitely, definitely monitor uh browning right now because <laughs> i'm tempted to put it if he was going up against the bears and jared goff was going up against the texans i would actually take a chance to put browning there but i like where jared goff is at right now um I, i'll i'll give him the nod and we'll see how that plays out and austin eckler i mean i i can feel it differently about this they play sunday at 125 this decision for the flex position could change but right now it stands and we're going to move on to the next team. And it's going to be you sure about this. Let's see where they're at. You sure about this? Okay, the, the, the dilemma continues, okay? Um, we saw Matthew Stafford have a bomb week, right? 22 points, right? Phenomenal. I mean, but Lamar Jackson and his elusiveness, man. It's just like... You can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him. You know, so who has the bigger game at quarterback? It probably can be Matthew Stafford, but he got his most reliable receiver, Puka Nakua, out. Um, so I, I think I think Lamar Jackson has a little bit more of a reliable receiver in um, in Zay Flowers. So I think Lamar Jackson, we, we we would expect him to have a bigger game. He's projected to do twenty point eight, and that's why he's been the starter. For most of my most of my leagues, well, for most of the season on this team, but I'll tell you, in years past, I was not picking up Lamar Jackson, my friend, as my starting quarterback. But this year, now that they've given some more points to um, the quarterback's rushing yards, and including you know all the contributions that they make to the game, yes, he's a player that I can definitely have lead my team. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see like really who truly has that better game because that's going to tell me a lot moving forward. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, the Ravens are sitting at the number one spot in the AFC North, so can't uh, can't take away anything from from those guys. And I think this team is pretty stacked the way it is. I put James Cook back in um, at that running back spot. It's come off of a bye week. The only real question mark for me, I got Cooper Cup, CeeDee Lamb, Jake Ferguson had a big week. 
The only real question mark for me is the health of DeAndre Swift. As I mentioned earlier, he had that uh, that that got hit late in the in the uh, Eagles versus 49ers game. So let's see. Swift undisclosed wasn't listed on the Eagles uh, first week 14 injury report on Wednesday. Okay, uh, but he did you know got sent to the locker room. Looks like it could have been earlier today. Looks like they said it was a possible concussion. Um, that he got hit with, so he's restricting on Wednesday's walkthrough. But it looks like he may come around to it. Um, he may be available, but I really don't have anybody else that I can put at that flex, um, which is which is alarming. Um, so I might have to. I mean, I got Jaden Reed, um, and he's going to be playing against the Giants. So I mean, in an emergency situation, yes, I can put in Jaden Reed. He had you know, week ten through weeks ten through twelve. He put up some numbers for me, struggled against Kansas City, but if he's healthy, I do expect Jordan Reed to find uh, Jaden Reed, no relation. I keep saying, I said Jordan Reed, and I? I meant Jordan Love. I expect, I hope Jordan Love can find Jaden Reed um, for some points, but, you know, I would say 9.6 points is better than no points, even though he's projected to do 13.1. If he's banged up, you know, under concussion protocol, I expect the Philadelphia Eagles to utilize um, Byron Scott and uh, Gainwell a lot more out the backfield. So let's just take a quick peek and see who my matchup is and see what the point spread is. So, uh, you know, 123 to 108, is he missing anybody? Yeah, it looks like he's got Kyle Murray in on a bye week. Uh, Puka Nakua, who is actually questionable, although the report said broken ribs, right? So how in the world is he expected to come back? Oh, dealing with an AC joint sprain. In his right shoulder, wow, I actually had that injury a few years back. Isn't expected to miss any time. He shined with four catches, I know that. But AC joint sprain, not separation. I had an AC joint separation. Interesting. I don't I don't see it. He's questionable. Man. I, I'm not putting him in. I have him come out of the leagues. He can take a seat on the bench, in my opinion. But, hey, roll the dice, man. Um, I hope he doesn't beat me with that guy. Um, but let's see. I honestly could probably take a risk if I really, from an analytical standpoint, I mean, DeAndre Swift really has not been producing like I wanted him to week or week. 14 and 9 is pretty low. Um, and you're going to be against a tough Dallas team who can just knock you out right away. So I would say I'll put in Jaden Reed for now. Demario Douglas is out. Um, they keep saying Justin Jefferson is going to come back in like when, right? Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson has not played due to a hamstring injury. He appears on the verge to return week 14 against the Raiders. And who are they playing? I said the Raiders. So it's, he's expected to make a return, but has not made one yet. So that's not reliable for me. I mean, yeah, I would love to have Justin Jefferson. And I've been trying to, I've been licking my wounds ever since he's he went down. So let's just take a look and see if there's anybody else. That could be a potential flex option for me who's projected to do 10 points or more. Let's see. So running back, Damian Pierce. I mean, he had a big game last week with 10. Well, it's actually not that big, but and you're going to play against the Jets defense. They're a tough defense, man. We're top five in the league right now. Chubba Hubbard. I mean, would I trust anybody out of the Panthers' backfield right now? Whoa! Chubba Hubbard, 20 points, and now he's going up against New Orleans? Whoa, one, two, three, four, five games left. This is a, in conference, it's a conference game. He's going to be indoors. We all know Miles Sanders. I used to have him on my roster. has done nothing. Okay, 12.9, Ezekiel Elliott, 13.5. You know, this is his first double-digit game in weeks, no way. But Chubba Hubbard. Oh. Could he really continue the trend? I mean, it's worth adding him to the roster. Oh, and that's what oh, I have to, oh, snap. They're making me move. So Justin Jefferson is off of IR. If they're making me move him, he's no longer injured. That will be interesting. 
Okay, uh, manage IR. Yeah, activate. Yeah, we'll drop Deontay Foreman, right? Yeah, let me let me let me drop Demario Douglas. Yeah, we'll drop him. And then let me check out Deontay Foreman. I mean, he hasn't really. Well, it looks like yeah, seven point four, seventeen point two. But he's always projected to do so much lower each week. Um. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up Chuba Hubbard. <laughs> Can't believe that's his name, but I'm gonna pick up Chuba Hubbard, bro, for sure. And Deontay Foreman, I can pick you up another day, bro. Yeah, dude. Ooh, now I got a decision to make. All right, Justin Jefferson, 16.1. I mean, if he's healthy, he's going in, but is he really? What? They said he's healthy? Are you sure? But who's the quarterback, Joshua Dobbs? Uh, I don't know. I just don't know. I, You know, what I what I like to do is, and I did it with A-Chain, is first game back. Well, you know what? First game back for Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, a running back for Green Bay Packers, he was coming off of an injury for his hamstring, and he struggled first game back. So what I like to do is when a guy is activated from IR to healthy, if I can afford it, which it looks like I can, 10-3, and three, you know, it looks like this might be the three-way tie league, I'm going to let him sit on the bench and prove that he can. He, he's back, right? We got an interconference, out of conference matchup against the against the Raiders. Next week, Cincinnati, then Detroit and Green Bay. These are going to be key games to let me know he's in full stride. Because you know a lot about that hamstring is that full knee extension, which will cause reactivation sometimes if you're not careful. So I'm going to make the pick. I mean, Jaden Reed might he might have himself a day against the Giants, man. Come on, dude. Oh, this is when I got to stay smarter than my smartphone, right? I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, guys, but this is sometimes what happens. Uh, la, 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 la. I wonder if this plus or minus has to do anything about him trending, like, projected to do, yeah, maybe 10 points above that. Can I get a 19? I could potentially get a 19-point game from Jaden Reed or a 20-point game. I'm going to go with Chubba Hubbard. I'm going to go with the running back to get more touches than the receiver. And I am going to final answer. <laughs> yeah, I like that. You know, finally get a Panthers play running back on there. And let's see what that does to my numbers now. 123.4 is fine. Doesn't change. Looks like he's already starting to make some changes on his team as well. Well, I'm going to leave it at that. Let me see. The defense is good. Everything else checks out. Oh, it didn't save it. It did not. I've got to save it somewhere. Jaden Reed is already in the bench lot. Okay, so why? It did not save. That was weird, right? I don't know about that. That's uh... Hmm? You said I'm low? Let me see. All right, Chubba Hubbard. Perfect. He's there. Alrighty, cool. So I'm I'm content with that. 123.4, we'll take it. Uh, moving on. If you know, you know. All right. Sometimes I gotta do another check. Right? Oh, no. Ooh, I'm nervous. Jake Ferguson, Philly. Defenses, Giants. Texans. Okay, Raheem Mostert. I mean, Raheem most been consistent, bro. Over the past couple weeks, as opposed to DeAndre Swift. So I'm going to take him. All right, moving on. Uh, let's see. If you know, you know. Number one seed, Jared Goff. Oh, Broncos defense? Oh, get them out of here. All right, so let's make this change. Off the rip. Add player. I need a defense. Somebody help me get a defense. Texans available. Let's go. Get them added. Broncos, good night. Perfect. 
All righty, Christian McCaffrey, Travis Etienne, Debo Samuel, DeAndre Hopkins, Sam Laporta, Josh Jacobs is back from his bye week. Texans defense, Nick Folk, Tennessee versus Miami. Yeah, they're going to need the kicker for sure. Um, yeah, see, Trevor Lawrence is questionable. He's projected to do 0. 0.0 points. All right, so I have James Cook, Raheem Mostert on my bench. Mm, James Cook, 14. Oh, yeah. I don't think anybody else is projecting me. This is just a deep bench. It's a deep roster. But I like Sam Laporta against Chicago. DeAndre Hopkins against Miami. That's going to be interesting. With with a Will Levy, a Will Levis at the quarterback position. I did have DeAndre Hopkins on my bench last week, and he, he dropped 18.9, you know. I feel like I kind of owe him. <laughs> um, I got Zay. Yeah, I got Zay Flowers in a lot of my other leagues. Um, doing his thing. Jordan Addison. Um, you know, did you know? It's been struggling to find the to get some touches from Joshua Dobbs. I'm gonna leave DeAndre Hopkins in this week against Miami, and I'm gonna see how this plays out. Because if DeAndre Hopkins does not perform against Miami, which is a conference matchup, okay, and Zay Flowers balls out against the Rams defense, that tells me, once again, Zay Flowers is a lock with Debo Samuel at that wide receiver number two spot. And that's really how I manage my team, guys. You know, if there's if there's a player like Zay that I have in a lot of other leagues, you know, not a lot of depth at wide receiver, in a situation like this, we're already the number one team in the in this league, um, coming off of a big week. You know, if I have a player who performed last week was on my bench, um, I'm going to take the chance and see what he can do so I know how to make um, an educated analysis moving forward. And look at that, a buck 30, just with the defense, hit my target number, 130. You saw it here live, so that's good. And I'm going to keep it locked right there at 130. And we're going to move on. ETN's questionable, but he should be fine against Cleveland. You know, what are they saying about ETN? What's, what's, what's the news? ETN ribs was limited practice on Wednesday. Oh, we. Oh, ETN played through the same injury Monday against Cincinnati. He dropped seven. He, he had 17 points with ribs. Oh, my gosh. I might just have to put in your boy. James Cook. And now it's going to put me under, though, isn't it? It's going to put me like 129, 128. Yeah, just probably just for, like, safety. And that happens sometimes, guys. You know, you're not always going to hit that number. But at the same time, uh, I, I want players who are going to be healthy. That's tough. The ribs, huh? Well, I don't really have anything to lose, so for the sake of examples and hitting that number, um, I'll keep it at 130 so we can see we can see my theory at play here, and we can move on from that. I'll keep it at 130. If he played through it, hopefully he'll be fine. Um, if not, I'll, that can change, you know. But for now, I'll keep it there. But yeah, 130, and it looks good. All right. Moving on to the Avengers. And by the way, guys, I will let you in on a secret. My team is straight drafted. I have not done any trades trades in any of my leagues for any players with anyone. This is straight up first day draft. And, you know, if a player goes down, I go right into add player and check who's available and, you know, plug and play with my, with my team. I don't trade with anybody, but look who's available. Whoa, CJ Stroud, Nico Collins are available. That's, that means these people are not paying attention and I'm watching games, bro. Yo, hang on a second. Do I need anybody? <laughs> nah, and I don't. Look at this. We're stacked. Brock, Bijan, Etienne, Olave, Debo, Ferg. Montgomery, Ayuk, James, Tua, Zay, these, these, this team could, could, you know, could ball out. Um, 
but that is that's good to know very good information to know but I'm definitely gonna need another defense let's see if I can find a defense that's available Packers base versus the Giants let's go I'll take that yeah Atlanta's gonna have their hands full against Tampa I'm uh, pretty much just switching between the Packers and the Texans right now. Those are, you know, New York teams right now are just not performing. So sp specifically the Giants and the Jets. So any team going up against the Giants, the Jets, the Bears, the Panthers, those bottom feeder teams um, are going to be projected to do a lot. So hopefully they can get a lot of turnovers um, for the team. Let's see if I'm missing anybody, though. Brandon Ayuk, um, Debo. I always like to check here, guys, what I'm doing here. It's pretty much just cross-referencing to see if there's anybody on my bench that's projected to do higher than anybody in my starting lineup, you know, because I don't want to make the mistake of, like, you know, moving too fast. And then, let's say, you know, James Cook is actually projected to do 20 points against Kansas City, and I'm not going to be projected to do eight, and I missed that. So, but although James Cook is projected to do higher than Dave Montgomery, right, against Kansas City, I like Dave Montgomery's matchup against Chicago. This team has been struggling all year, ranked 21st in the league. Um, the Kansas City defense ranked 13th, so that's like, you know, top 15. Montgomery, now I'll go a little further, take a little further, click on Montgomery's name, coming off with some pretty solid weeks, 12-15. Um, James Cook was on a bye week prior to that, you know, 16-19, so I really can't go wrong with either player, but I think with Chicago being an underperforming team and Kansas City trying to reestablish, you know, dominance in AFC, I'm going to give the nod to Dave Montgomery as my flex running back to do his thing. Honestly, I'm really just, to be honest, really got question marks about B. John Robinson. I know he had, you know, playing against like a tough New York Jets defense last week, but only 10 points, man. That's borderline. That's, 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 the, that's bare minimums. That's Bare minimums for him, you know, 2020, you know, 10, 18. That is bare bones minimum. So, you know, coming off a big week against New Orleans, where he put up 27, that is a huge drop. So hopefully, you know, that was just like a, you know, out of conference fluke and he gets right back to it um, against Tampa. Because, uh, you know, Atlanta is sitting at that number one seed. So if they want to keep it. They're going to have to keep winning. So hopefully he'll, he'll kick it into high gear. And be able to perform, but that is a question mark. I will be keeping a close eye on Bijan's production this week against Tampa Bay. Hopefully, he can you know hit or exceed his projections. If not, um, you know James Cook is waiting, um, and we'll see how he does against Kansas City. So that will tell me a lot as far as evaluation goes. If James Cook can play up, offensive line can protect and have success against Chris Jones and that defensive line of Kansas City. And let's say Bijan Robinson struggles in the uh, NFC South. Division that isn't really that impressive against Tampa Bay. We're going to have to have a serious conversation of where, you know, B. John Robinson and also I'm going to need Dave Montgomery to perform as well against Chicago. Um, we're going to have to have a serious conversation about B. John Robinson. But also, because I have so much depth, I'll take you, I'll give you a fourth step. If Travis Etienne is not healthy um, because of the rib injuries, then James Cook will be moving up here. If Dave Montgomery has a good game, He'll move into that RB2 spot. Um, and then I'll have to put, you know, I'll put one of these receivers, Brandon Ayuk, Zay Flowers, or Jordan Addison at that flex position if I need to. So I have a lot of options here on this Avengers, on this, on this Avengers team. Uh, so this is the type of things that you definitely want to be thinking about when you're drafting players, not only just your starters, but make sure they have reliable backups just in case they go down. Um, you don't want to just have a juggernaut squad of starters and then nobody to back them up. So I did the best I could, um, you know, with these teams, making sure that they're well balanced, and uh, and you know it, it 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 shows it pays off. Number one in the league, so definitely take it from me um, if you can. And uh, yeah, hopefully it helps. So that's that. Let's take a look at my matchup. A buck twenty-seven is my opponent, and then I'm at a buck twenty-two point five. So I'm actually projected to do lower 
than him, but let's take a look at those at that matchup. So Dak Prescott, yeah, may or may not have a big game against Philly. Chris McCaffrey will do his thing. Jalen Warren actually coming off of a slow week last week um, against Arizona, only 6.5. So back-to-back under 10 per week performances. So I, I don't expect him to outperform Travis Etienne. There's a potential chance if Etienne isn't healthy. So this might be something I want to look at um, and putting in a healthy running back in James Cook just to make sure he, that he stands the best chance. C. Lamb, solid receiver. I expect Dak Prescott to find him. So that combo would probably be pretty good and fare well for my opponent. Um, Chris Olave, New Orleans, he's going up against Carolina. I expect him to eat and get to close to 20 points on there, so I don't see him having an issue matching up well against C.D. Lamb. Devontae Smith Jr., um, Justin Field, uh, excuse me, J- Jalen Hurst has been able to find him, so it's going to be a great, you know, rivalry game there against Dallas. Um, I got Debo Samuel against Seattle, so I, hopefully he can have at least, you know, half what he did last week. We'll still put me at 15 and put some pressure on Devontae. Dawn Schultz, I'm not too sure what happened with him. He was a pretty big uh, target um, for C.J. Stroud in a few weeks prior, but last week very, very low at 1.2, as you can see, prior three weeks, 11, 11, 27 against Tampa, uh, but then against Jacksonville, uh, 1.2. So not sure what happened um, there, but uh, you know, I know the Texans fans hope that he can you know, get back to that. Um, but then against Denver, they played this past week, you know, he wasn't even available. I don't know if he was injured or what, but so back to back weeks of either not available or underperforming. So for my sake, and it looks like he's also questionable. So maybe he's got an injury here. Let's take a look. A sore hamstring to the sideline. Yeah. That'll take you out because you need to be able to run in this league. If you can't let run and your legs don't work, you, you're not going to be able to function. But, you know, Dak Prescott's going to also have to find your boy Jake Ferguson, who, you know, missed a touchdown by inches on the goal line against the game against Philly on the road. So I expect him to maybe make it up to to, 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 to Jake or Jake to make it up to Dak, whatever. Uh, but the two of them to definitely hook up nicely and get some points for my team as Dalton isn't looking healthy. Michael Gallup, also for Dallas. It looks like this guy might be a – it says Team Patriots, but it looks like he's a pretty good big Cowboy fan. He's got three Cowboys players. Maybe it's just coincidence, but uh, I got Dave Montgomery to running back to get those those handoffs. I think he'll be matching up pretty well against Michael Gallup, who actually has been pretty quiet, in my opinion, over the past couple weeks. And my theory proves that 0 2 6. So that should be a good one for my team. 49ers playing against Seattle. Uh, you know, it's going to come down to the quarterback player, Geno. Packers uh, playing against the Giants. I expect them to have a field day. Um, and then, you know, Los Angeles kicker. I mean, honestly. <sighs> they're going up against the you got the Baltimore Ravens kicker. They're actually going up against um who are they playing? The Denver Broncos. I mean, honestly, bro, in my opinion, the Chargers are coming off of a 6-0 victory. That I mean that I don't know if that means that he was only able to be in field goal range twice. But the way the Chargers are looking, I might not even want to have any association with anybody from that team. So let's see. He's projected to do 8.2. Is there anybody else at the kicker position that's projected to do higher? Harrison Bucker and Brandon Aubrey for Philly. Well, he's for Dallas, but he plays. He's playing against Philly. Hmm. I mean, Brandon Aubrey... 15, 9, 9. It's pretty big. And then this goal is take it a step further. We'll go back. Well, for right now, just to make sure I don't lose him, just in case there's anybody else in my league looking at the same position, I'm going to go ahead and add him. Um, I could take a quick peek just to see what my kicker has been averaging. 6, 4, 9. So not terrible, but just not what I'm looking for right now in this season. You know, this Dallas Cowboys-Eagles game might be a lot closer than we think. So I'm going to go ahead and go give him the nod. And let me take a look at my matchup one more time. That does close the gap a little bit. Um, but I do want to see what Justin Tucker's been averaging. Yeah, 9, 11, 6, 14. So, yeah, I think that's still, that makes me feel a little bit better, though, about my team. And I don't expect Jalen Warren and Dawn, Dawn Shorts and Michael Gallup to have as big a game as they're projected. Um Michael Gallup, 4.9, 8.9. I mean, I don't even know how he's predicted to do higher than me, for real, for real. 
but it's primarily because of Dak Prescott and Chris McCaffrey and CeeDee Lamb. Dang, he's protected up 24 points. My goodness, but this is like a well-balanced happy meal right here. All with double digits, right? Only people under 10 is a defensive kicker. And we got, you know, high at the, in the back court right here. That front court, you know, down to the bench is looking a little, little shaky. So I like my chances in this one right here. Like I said, number one seed right here in this, in this league. So I'm not too worried there. Avengers, you ain't no cowboy. You ain't no cowboy. Yes, I did it, ladies and gentlemen. Breaking news. Patrick Mahomes has been benched. Yeah, he has. Um, <laughs> you know, it, what am I ranked in this league? Um, you know, second in the league. I believe I've already clinched if you watched the last video. Jordan Love is hot right now. Going up against a Giants defense, protected to 17. I expect him to carve up the Giants defense. He's coming off of back-to-back -back weeks of 20-plus points. Sorry, three weeks of 20-point performances or higher. Um, and then Patrick Mahomes is coming off like under 20 weeks. Uh, under 20 weeks. Under 20-point weeks. He had 13, under 15, 20, whatever. But I don't think Patrick Mahomes has any real receivers. I think he's going to be playing against Buffalo. Um, so, yeah, I expect Jordan Love to have a bigger game. I'm not going to be biased because I'm a fan of Patrick Mahomes. Once again, like I said in my last video, take your emotions out of it when you're a manager of a fantasy football team. Take your emotions out of it. Leave it in the locker room and put your product on the field that you feel is going to put you in the best place to win games. Um, so that's what we're doing here. And hopefully I'm right, right? You know, if I was sitting at like sixth place, you know, would I really take that risk? Um, it depends, you know, on how Patrick Mahomes is performing. You know, everybody gets held accountable in this league. And everybody gets held accountable on my team. So we've already clinched that spot. Looks like this, you know, our, our fate is sealed. So now it's just an opportunity to show me moving forward who's reliable, who's not, who I can count on, who I can't. And just this week alone, um, got to play matchups. I expect Jordan Love to carve up the Giants defense, and I expect the Packers defense to destroy the Giants. So we'll see if I'm right on that. Josh Jacobs is back from bye week. A chain, you know, he said he's healthy, and he showed me, right, 25 points against Washington. So we got another uh, conference matchup against Tennessee. Tyreek Hill doing his thing. Brandon Ayuk, not going to touch him. Um, Kyle Ridley hit the bench. Meet my bench. Jake Ferguson doing his thing. Isaiah Pacheco, we know he got the shoulder contusion, as I mentioned before. Puka Nakua, um, we got the also got a shoulder with the um, AC joint sprain. So they'll, they'll take a, a seat on the bench for a while. And Cortland's son has been reliable, although the Denver Broncos have not been the, the most um, fun team to watch all season. Russell Wilson has found ways to get Cortland's son the ball consistently throughout the season uh, with only two weeks. Under 10 points, so I, I expect him to continue to have success in connecting with his receiver against the Chargers, who are really just um, at a loss for words right now, and maybe even a loss for their playbook. Uh, let's take a look here. So I like that matchup. Aaron Rodgers, Achilles. Wow, this might be the game of the week. A and four. We're actually projected to do less. Who does he have? Yeah, Justin Herbert's not going to have a good game. ETN, we know it's questionable. Keenan Allen, if, you, if Josh Herbert's not going to have a good game, Keenan Allen won't get the ball. So he's probably really depending on this um, duo right here to work out for him. Garrett Wilson doesn't have a quarterback. Patriots defense may do well against Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh for sure. Um, but yeah, I think I like I like my chances, man. My team is, looks like, a, once again, look at that well-balanced Happy Meal. You see that? Look at that. Only people under 10 points. Defensive kicker. Anybody under 10 points here? Okay, defensive kicker. Yeah, it's going to be a good game. Okay, okay. Okay, definitely going to be a good game. Let's see where uh, Aaron Rodgers' Achilles stacked up. Yeah, number three spot. So two games behind first place, one game behind me. Um, so, yeah, he's trying to make me 9-4. and four, uh, But I'm trying to get to 10 wins. So hopefully that can happen for my team. That's more for bragging rights going into the postseason. But, yeah, at the end of the day, I always want to win. So and I think these, these players – Give me the best chance to do that. They're healthy, ready to rock and roll, and uh, I expect them to do well. Moving on, roast them. Another team, number one seed, baby. I'm trying to tell y'all, bro. I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm trying to give you the inside scoop. 
I'll be paying attention. I know it's late on the East Coast, man, but stay with me. It's only 10 o'clock. Where my night owls at? Where my night owls? Huh? 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 Where my night owls at? Okay, let me take a look here. Brees Hall is questionable. But he's been running the football well. I mean, all you got to do is hand the ball off, right? That's all you got to do. Just hand the football off, right? Not too hard. Right? Whoever's a quarterback, just snap the ball, hand it to him. Okay, yeah. Like I said, not as high as what I saw week five, week six, but 10 points, okay, 10, 11, you know. Who would I have on my bench? Not, not many options. Kenneth Walker was out last week. Is saying he's coming back. Questionable, no. Oblique injury has shelved Walker for the past two weeks. Seahawks are hopeful. He can return in week 14 against San Francisco. Yeah, all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, he, could, he could take a seat there. Matt Gay, listen, guys. I know I got Justin Tucker on my bench, and some people are probably asking me why. Matt Gay has been dropping numbers. Well, you know, 14, 9, whatever. But he's caught up against Cincinnati, you know. 8.3. Yeah. What's my matchup looking like? Goodell is, oh boy, inappropriate. 118, looks like he's, uh, I wouldn't say he's not paying attention, but he's got Ramondre Stevenson, so he's not paying attention. Um, Let's see if I have anybody else. Jerome Ford, yeah, we saw him put up a pretty solid you know, point spread last week, 14. I'll take that. Anyway, that's my bench. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes projected to do 19.6. Brock Purdy, 19.8. So once again, Patrick Mahomes on the bench, man. Like, who's throwing the football to? Not not much. Uh, let's see. Tight end Ferguson. Okay, Brandon Cooks at 10.6. He did have a pretty big game um, against – wait a second. No, he didn't. I thought he had a big game against Philly. Who did they play against? Oh, it was against Seattle. Yeah, on Thanksgiving Day, he had a pretty solid point spread, four, uh, 16 points. Damn. Oh, it's against the Giants. Yeah, who doesn't have a big game against the Giants? All right, but yeah, let's see. He's playing against Philly. I mean, Dak Prescott's going to be – he's going to need to use all of his weapons to be successful against the against the uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. So, yeah. I feel confident with him being at that at that wide receiver two spot. Back to back weeks over fifteen, you know that's trending in the right direction. Hopefully, Dak has enough time um, to find him. So it's it's close, right? Jaden Reed, once again, I'm in the number one seed. I did have Brandon Cooks on my bench last week, I believe, um, or maybe I did. I actually, I don't think I did. I don't think I did. Um, Jaden Reed, nine point six, so only. Projected to do one point less than Brandon Cooks. See, this is an opportunity right here. I'm at that one spot. I could take the chance here, guys. I could take it. I can afford to take this risk and put in Jaden Reed. I could afford it. But do I really want to, though? That's the question. Before I do that, is there anyone else that I might be missing? Because um, Philadelphia has shown me that they they allow receivers to get open. Um, <laughs> so let's see if there's anybody else at receiver that could get picked up. George Pickens, that's a no. That is a no-go. Um, Odell Beckham. He had a couple good weeks between weeks 9 and 11. Yeah, it's not looking like many options. Zay Jones got a backup quarterback. Yeah, so a pretty slim at wide receiver and take Dallas on IR because if he wasn't, I would be for sure picking him up. Let's see what his actual injury was. Oh, it's like a fibula, I believe, like a broken fibula. Yeah, a fibula, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see. Gabe Davis against Kansas City, 11.4. What's Gabe Davis' stats been? 22.5 against Philly. And then just nothing. Yeah, that's that's not reliable. 
All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep a roster the way it is. Um, should I take the chance on Jaden Reed or even Romeo Dobbs? Like I said before, it doesn't look sexy, right? Having somebody in your starting lineup that's projected to do under ten points, but Romeo Dobbs even eleven points, okay. Yeah, he's gonna find him, bro. He's gonna get the ball. He's gonna get the ball, bro. All right, so two weeks, two weeks, single digits. Two weeks, two weeks, single digits. One week. Mm. Brandon Cooks against Philly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it as is. I don't. That's tough. That's tough. I mean, what I can do, you know what I can do? Here, here's here, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Ready? All right. So we all know Romeo Dobbs and Jaden Reed can probably have a big game against the, the Giants, right? This is what I tell them, okay? And then, like, you, and then like I just saw, though, Brandon Cooks, he struggled against Philly, though. Yeah, 1.7, he struggled. He struggled. Okay, well, let me get back to my deal. Well, my deal is... We all know that they can put up, anybody can put up points against the Giants. Show me you can do it against the Giants, and then show me again you can do it against Tampa, and then I'm going to put you in for against Carolina. But since Brandon Cooks did struggle against Philly, I could take it, I could roll the dice. Who would I want to roll the dice on? Romeo Dobbs, who I think is trending into a double digit game. Or Jaden Reed, who only had one bye week, one bad week, excuse me, against the Chiefs. All right. I'm going to go with Jaden Reed. I expect him to get the ball in his hands. And that's, and that's my final answer. Ooh, 117. No. Oh. So I go back to my deal. I gotta go back to my deal. 117 is low. Ooh, I don't think I ever want to see that number ever again. Let's see. That's so hard. I mean, he struggled against Philly, but that was weeks ago, right? The Cowboys are gonna be trying to, you know, prove a point here, right? Right? Right, Brandon Cooks, you're gonna get open, right? Right? You're gonna cement yourself as a reliable. Second option, buying CD Lamb, right? Ben and Cooks. You better put me right, bro. I'm put up I'm putting my video on the line. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna stay with a buck eighteen. I feel like I can sleep better at night with the buck eighteen. So that's my final answer. And make sure my defense is looking good. Who I got a defense? Yeah, the Texans. And honestly, let me just put in um Justin Tucker. Who am I kidding? Who am I kidding? 18.9. Sounds good. Who am I kidding? All right. Moving on. First column is down. Marvelous. It's marvelous. Okay, not much to see here, folks. But I do need a defense, so... Buccaneers are going to be in a fight against Atlanta. So, let's see. Give me a defense... I will go with ta, 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 ta. the Texans this time. Yeah, the Texans and the, and, the, and the Packers, bro. This plug and play, the best defense. The defense who has the best match of the week. I really, I really don't keep. I think the only uh, defense that I've kept throughout the season has been the Cowboys. Everybody, everybody else has been a you know, plug and play. Um, Keenan Allen. Oh, boy. Okay, this is a real question mark. Keenan Allen and the Chargers. And. Keen Allen all set for a better I mean, I don't know if he's set for a better week this week. But he did manage to get ten points. You know? I mean, who do I put in? I'm not gonna put in Ridley, the backup quarterback, I'm not gonna put in Addison or Joshua Dobbs, Rashid Rice. You know, he's he's been pretty good. Um 
Oh, Kansas City, 1424. I expect him to def. I mean, he's. I think. I think right now he's Patrick Mahomes' only wide receiver. You know, it's it's Kelsey and then Rice. So I expect him to get utilized more in the in the game. But where? What do I rank here? I'm second in this in this league. Let's see. This one's gonna need some work. Okay, I'm second. Did I clinch yet? Not yet. Eight and four. So this is pretty crucial. All right. Um, I see Pacheco. We know he's got the shoulder shoulder issue, so I can put in Cook there, and then um, yeah, Etienne got the ribs, huh? Dang, ribs or shoulder? Any running back available? Let's see who's available on waivers. Madsen's supposed to be back against the Vegas Raiders. Madsen hasn't been the same since week nine. Miles Sanders, we know, is not doing his thing. Ezekiel Elliott would be a big risk because he just finally had one good week out the backfield. It's not worth the risk there at all. Back to my team. What's my matchup looking like? A couple of things here. I hope you guys are following on. Dang, a buck 38 we're projected to put up? Jeez. I mean, who is he playing? Yeah, Joe Burrow on IR. He's not paying attention. All right. Um, still, this is a big week, so I want to make sure I put my guys in position to succeed. Brock Purdy definitely gets an eye. Looks like I got two backup quarterbacks here. It's funny. But Rasheed Rice, uh, see that, and that's the thing, guys. I can't. Keenan Allen's projected to do twenty points against the Denver Broncos defense. Do I really take him out and put in Rasheed Rice just because Justin Herbert is struggling in the passing game? That is a huge ask of me. But if he does against Buffalo. I mean, Keenan Allen has yet to go under 10, I think, this entire season. Am I correct? Yeah, only one week. Week 7 was the only week he went get under 10 points. So even with quarterback struggles and a great New England defense, he still managed to get 10. So I'm going to keep him in. He's not proving me. He's not letting me down all year. Um, but if he goes under 10 and Rashid has a big game, then, you know, I'll make some adjustments at that time. But uh, what's more, what's bigger, you know, ribs? Oh, sorry, a shoulder or ribs, right? 15.4, 15, both projected to 15.4, oh gosh. Um, I think that's it. I think I'll leave it at that. Travis Etienne, looks like he played through injury on Monday, so it may not be bugging him all that much. Isaiah Pacheco, he got a shoulder, and he got ejected. Not really sure where his head's at right now, but he's coming off a back-to-back big weeks over 20 points, so. It's going to be interesting. ETN. Been picking it up as well. Um, and that's a flex spot. If I move. Let's say I move him there. Now I can get creative with my flex area. I can put Rashid Rice in. If I don't want to take a chance. On the health. If I want to put in a fresh team. That'll probably be my, uh, yeah, give these guys a week off. Where does that put me at, projection-wise? 135, so it's still over 130. Okay. I'm second place. It gives me everybody that's fresh. Rasheed Rice, I get to finally give him the nod to see what he can do against a good Buffalo Bills defense team. Um, James Cook also, so two players going at it yeah I think I feel good with that I'm gonna I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do that so that's that and Tennessee Nick Falk has been doing his thing pretty consistently they're playing against Miami they're gonna need a kicker yeah I don't think there's any other kicker out there that's gonna outperform him 8.5 let's see 7.7 
Tennessee against Miami. I think the Tennessee Titans will get in a field goal range, right? Against the, against the Dolphins defense. Jake Moody, Matt Gay against Cincinnati. Tyler Bass, the Buffalo kicker. And I got three kickers, which I could do over eight. My current kicker is at seven. I'm going to give Matt Gay a chance because since I benched him, since I benched him against the, uh, I benched him with the team that had Justin Tucker, and I'm going to give him a nod here and see what he can do for me. That should put me back up to close to 136. Yeah, 136.5. I'm content with that. Moving on. King of the Jungle. Jordan Love once again gets a nod in this league. I went ahead and benched Justin Herbert after that embarrassing performance. 7.9. I mean, what are you doing? It's a joke. I don't care if it's New England. I mean, I get it. They're a good defense. But, I mean, maybe New England defense is really just that good. You think? 19.1? <laughs> well, he could earn a spot. You know, I expect Jordan Love to call off the Giants defense. You know, what's my matchup? Oh, wow. So that's a big game. Have I clinched? <laughs> Did I clinch? Yeah, I clinched. What's up, man? I already clinched, bro. Come at me, bro. I already clinched, bro. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, if Justin Herbert can have a, a, a better game against the Denver Broncos. Maybe I put him in against the Vegas Raiders, you know. But um, I expect Jordan Love to have himself a field day, so I'm not going to deny him that opportunity to show me to prove to me that he's the Jordan Love of earlier in the season, right? They're starting to hit their stride late. All right, so we got the Cowboys defense, though. Definitely don't want that this week against Philly. Any defense out there available for me? Oh, no, slim pickings. Browns defense, no. Bills, no. Texans defense against the Jets, yes, sir. Thank you. Um, and who do I want to drop? Honestly, Philly, bro. They got torched. They got torched, bro. I'm sorry. You got torched. You got torched, bro. Um, call a spade a spade. Um, the Chargers kicker. We don't want nothing to do with the Chargers right now. So let's get them out the picture. Um, I'll take Jake Moody. Cleveland, Dustin Hopkins, Brandon McManus. I'll take Nick Folk because I benched him. No, no, no. I'll take, I'll take, the, I'll take the high one. I'll drop him. I'm gonna drop that boy. Jake Moody. Yeah, Cal really on the bench. I got Zay Flowers up against the Rams. I like that matchup. And where does that put me at now? One twenty one, okay, close. Much closer. I think it's the flex right now that's that's killing me. Um ten point oh. I mean Gus Edwards he's gonna run the football. I mean if there's anybody that's gonna be able to run through um that defensive line of the Rams, Gus Edwards, he's the only running back that they have. So I mean you got Keaton Mitchell as well, but whatever. Projections say ten oh, I think he'll exceed that. Um and let's see what the breakdown is right now. Josh Allen, okay, Tony Pollard, Alexander, Mia Madsen, you're not going to do it. You know, um, well, against Jerome Ford, he has an opportunity. Is that my only running back option? Dang, I got no running backs. James Conner's on a bye week, that's why. All right, let's take a look at available players. Any running backs available? Chubba Hubbard! Chubba Hubbard, bro. Can I trust you in more than one league, bro? Chubba Hubbard, bro. Chubba Hubbard. Hmm. That's going to be interesting, bro. <laughs> Do I roll the dice on Chubba Hubbard? Jerome Ford, 11.5. Gus Edwards, 10.0. I mean, Gus has Gus been doing his thing for me, right? Ooh. 
four point seven for the bye week. That's not good at all. Twenty one points so against Cincinnati though. Damn, I don't know, dude. That's tough. Who's this matchup? Alright, let me drop somebody anyway, because I'm gonna get Chubba Hubbard. So who am I dropping? Romeo Dobbs. Um maybe drop Gerald Everett. Yeah, that's fine. I'll drop the tight end though. No, let me drop Romeo Dobbs. That's fine. Alright. So Chubba Hubbard strikes to twelve point nine. Chubba Hubbard. Jerome Ford. Where are we at now? One twenty four, okay. <laughs> Yo. That's crazy. That's crazy. I'm gonna just put Chubba Hubbard in just like that. Hasn't been on my team all season. Just gonna throw him into the wolves. And gonna put Gus Edwards on the bench. I mean, hey. Let's see what happens. Like I said, man. We are ranked third in this league. Playoff and clinched. You know, I got nothing to lose. But the seed, right? Because right now, you know, first, uh, let's see what the standings are. One, two, three, four. So I'll probably put one against the four seed. And then me and him will go at it. You know, who is Team Sturba playing, though? Is he playing anybody? Team Sturba, they're playing Bills Mafia. Okay. Five and seven. Let's see what that uh, matchup looks like. Bills Mafia. So 121. Yeah, I mean, he's actually not, he's actually projected to take a L right here, so. I don't know if he's paying attention, but uh, we'll see. I sure am. And I have a lot to learn in this game about my team. Um, no matter what happens. So I feel weird about putting Gus on the bench, though, because he's like the, the Ravens' like only running back. You know what I mean? And he's been putting up some numbers for me. 20, 29, 17. One slow week, big week, slow week, you know. But we'll see. Um, I'll, I'll take a chance. I'll take a risk here. I roll the dice. I roll the dice. I could do that. It's fine. We clinched. We clinched. We clinched. Get things done. Let's see how my missus has done. I don't think she's changed much yet, so I won't, I won't spend too much time on it because I don't want to make any picks for her. But she got Patty in. Yeah, Sam Howell's on a buy. She got Patty in. You know, she gonna she gonna rock she gonna uh she gonna rock a Patrick Mahomes, man, so that's her quarterback, man. So Williams, he's probably gonna have himself a day. Jalen Warren. Honestly, if I was her, seeing what the New England Patriots did to B. John Robinson, I'd probably I'd probably bench Jalen Warren and I I put in Jerome Ford against Jacksonville. That's just my opinion. They're only like a point three difference in point projection um if i was her i would yeah because new england defense has been playing lights out and no running back has been able to to, to do well with them so i think i think Jalen warren is coming off a slow week as well yeah 6.5 back-to-back weeks under 10 so i'll probably let her know yeah you know re my recommendation will be to give jerome for the nod here Devonte smith yep michael Pittman, yep i agree laporta stefan Diggs is back absolutely Ravens defense, um, they haven't really, they, they've been doing well for her um, all season. So I don't really, I don't see her making a change there. 16 points against the, Jard against the Chargers before the bye week. Um, I do see the Rams being able to put up some numbers. Um, she has a Buccaneers defense on the bench. Let's take a quick peek and see what defenses are available in her league. Uh, anybody playing against the Jets and Giants? Yeah, so she has an opportunity. Packers and Texans uh, playing against New York Giants and New York Jets. So I would definitely 
you know, if I was her, um, you know, they got a huge, the Ravens are going to be going up against a hungry Rams team. I would drop the Buccaneers defense and put in either the Texans and the Packers and just let them give her some more points. Um, Matt Gay against Indianapolis. Well, he's on Indianapolis screen against Cincinnati. Solid. But that'll definitely give her some more points. Um, I know they say Kenneth Walker is to be back, but I don't trust it. And who is her matchup? Dallas Goddard. It looks like he's been activated, but Sam Laporta is projected to do 12.4 against Chicago. I, th- I still like that matchup with a banged up Dallas Goddard. I think he stays put. Um, he's, she's going up against Mr. Mason, as I talked about in the last video. Yeah, number one seed. She's projected to do higher than him right now. Um, you know, Mr. Incredible in the standing. She's sitting at third place. So it is an opportunity for her to really send a message um, to, the, to, to the league. Uh, she can pull off the win here. And it looks like he might not be even paying any attention. He's got Kyler Murray. Probably because he's clinched. He's probably sitting pretty. I think everything is sweet and cute. Um, while wow, GTD is coming in hot. So Kyler Murray is not is on a bye week. Dang, yeah, Alvin Kamara versus the Panthers. He's he should have a day. Isaiah Pacheco, he's probably not he's probably just looking at the queue, didn't see anything, but he's got that shoulder um injury. Um Adam Thielen, you know, just been struggling find him the football because the quarterback production. Kelsey, okay. Evans, yeah, he got a pretty good squad. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day she is projected to do higher. As it stands, but I think she could still have a little more points on her defense, which will put her up to that 120 range. And then, you know, point, you can get a little bit of change from Jerome Four, which will put her definitely at like 121. So we'll see how she moves forward with that. And star studded Justin Herbert. I'm really going to trust him, huh? Yeah, my backup quarterback in this one is Russell Wilson. So. There you go, with Justin Herbert. Here's your opportunity to prove to me that you can lead this team. You're the one, one of the top quarterbacks I drafted, and now it's the opportunity to show that you can have a better game than Russell Wilson. If he gets outperformed by Russell Wilson, of any quarterbacks available on, on waivers right now, Sam Howell, Geno Smith, yeah, you know, maybe these two. If Sam Howell comes back off of a bye week and has a pretty good matchup, I can actually, you know, foreshadow that right now. By week, then he plays the Rams. You know, he'll still manage to get the ball down the field. Um, but, uh, yeah, Justin Herbert, he will get his opportunity on star studded to lead his team to victory. Okay. Debo Samuel, um, DeAndre Hopkins can stay on my bench once again. You know, they're playing against Miami, Keen Allen, slow week against um, the Patriots. They played. Yeah, Page is locking up everybody. Secondary running backs is crazy. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to bounce back against the Denver Broncos. But still soon to be seen. And uh, But everybody else is maxed out. 16.6 quarterbacks taking care of that. 14.4. Um, not really outpacing the receiving core. And 10 and 13. Yeah, like looks good. We'll move on. That was easy. We did it. So my young is out there, bro. We did it together. Oh, did I take a look at the matchup there? Let me take a look at the matchup, though. I'm not sure if I did that. Star studded. <laughs> yeah, buck 39, dude. Yeah, good luck. Second, sitting at the number two seed. Boy, oh boy. Did I clinch? Oh, not yet? That's crazy. All right, bro. I mean, a three-way tie for second place. I get it, but... Hopefully, we'll clinch this week. All right. We did it. Moving on. Talia. Sorry, I said Talia. <laughs> uh, his younger brother is still playing. Um, Tua. Tonga Bailoa gets a nod here. Yeah, I mean, it's second seed. I got to get to an opportunity to play one of these games, right? And against Tennessee, I expect him to find your boy, um, Tyreek Hill. You know, it looks like we're a little bit... We're a little bit slim in the backfield. Yeah, Jalen Warren against New England. Let me take my own advice. I'm going to put in Gus Edwards in this one. Yeah, I'm not taking that chance. The Patriots right now, they, they, they're they cooking some. The defense coordinator is brewing something different over there. So, Gus Edwards against the Rams. I'll take that matchup. Um, Jamar Chase, yes. Mike Evans, yes. Laporta, yes. Debo Samuel, yes. Harrison Bucker, yes. Um, I wish I had some more running backs. I mean, Devin Singletary 
past the big weeks for me, and then he just fell off. Look at that. Boom. 23, 19, 13, and 5. And Damian Pierce comes back. No way. And they're going against the Jets defense. Yeah, I don't think that running back, that running crew is going to have much success. Any other running backs? Do I got do I got Chubba Chubba Hubbard? Chubba Hubbard? Hey yo, is he gonna be my dark horse? Bruh. Chubba Hubbard, bro. Stop playing with him. Do I who do I drop though? Devin Singletary, no way you're second for him. But me. Maybe I put Chubba Hubbard on this one and I monitor. Or do I give him the nod again? Let's see what what's the what's the matchup looking like. One sixteen and one nineteen. Is he paying attention? No, Zach Ertz, free agent. I mean, uh, out on injury. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We second place that I clinch. Have I clinched? I did clinch. Okay. So I could take a risk here. I could take a risk keeping Gus. I'm keeping Gus. Let's keep in Gus here. Yeah, this is yeah. I have Brock Purdy in. I have Chubba Hubbard in. Let's keep in Gus. And let's keep in Tua and see what they do. Because I am also projected to win this one as well. Okay, so I'll do that. Yeah, everything else looks good. All right, we did it. No fly zone. No fly zone, bruh. Did we clinch? It's going to help me. All right, help my decision making. Okay, we got the clinch there. Uh, let's see the team now. What's the point spread? Okay, a three point spread. Wow, not not by much. 3.3 3 right now. So it's a very close game. So this is going to be. All right, I'm going to need my boys in. Brock Purdy. Bijan, yes. A chain, yes. Metcalf, yes. Evans, yes. Ferguson, yes. Sutton, yes. Packers, yes. Get rid of the Chargers kicker. Watch, watch him have a day, y'all. I'm over here. I'm kicking all these Chargers kickers to the moon. Watch them have a day tomorrow. Uh, Jason Sanders, Miami. Or Riley Peterson. Cairo Santos. He gave me too much of a scare. Jason Sanders, what's been his consistency? Wow, three weeks in a row, 10 plus. Let's go. Let's go, Mr. Sanders. Okay, I'll take that. And uh, anybody else? That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that team is pretty much packed out as best I could do it. And we did clinch the number three seed. And three points spread. That's best I could do. That's gonna be another game. That's gonna be a really close game. Going up against CJ Stroud, Saquon Barkley, and Kyron Williams. Oh brother. I'ma have my hands full. Stefan Diggs and Nico Collins. Evan Ingram, I just need Puka Nakua to not do his thing right here. And the 49ers not to be able to stop Seattle. But boy, yeah, this top. Two, four, six. Honestly, this is a top five. Yeah, that that's that's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty stacked, bro. That's pretty stacked. I'm still projected to to outperform them. So yeah, I'm pretty stacked too. We'll see. We'll see, bro. Right? And nobody's scared of these boys, man. That's gonna be a game of the week. That's my game of the week right there. Oh wait, 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 wait. You see that team spider? It's still a number two seed. Ten and two. Oh, let's go. I'm going up against the number two seed. Okay, I mean I still like a like yeah, I'm still a few games behind. So even if they lose, I'll be at ten and three, I'll be at nine and four, but still. I'll take it. That's a good game. That's my game of the week. This is my new game of the week right here. Number three versus number two seed. Uh, 3.4 point spread right there. All right. So, are you shocked? Are you shocked, my boy? Did I clinch first? Did I clinch? What? Number one 
and I haven't clinched. Wow. Because the two-way tie for first, I guess. B-Dog is what? He's second. And who am I playing? Am I playing B-Dog? I'm playing, I'm playing Team Hook, who's fourth. I'm actually playing against a fourth seed. Yeah, so if I lose, yeah, so I got, it's a two-way tie for first, and three teams only one, one win, by, one loss, one game behind, excuse me. Three teams only one game behind. So if I lose, I fall to eight and five. And Hokey Buns is up to eight and five. So this is a big week. This is an enormous week. Wow. Okay. So Team Hook. Number four C one twenty one. CJ Stroud, Joe Mixon, A Chain Waddle. Hasn't really begun the ball like that though. Right? Well, it looks like he's been getting it enough. <laughs> Puka Nakua, he's injured. Evan Ingram, Justin Jefferson. He's going to trust Justin Jefferson? He's going to trust Justin Jefferson? <laughs> okay. Let me go back to my team. I like my squad. I like my matchup here. Yup, 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 yup. Tennessee kicker, Nick Falk. Against Miami, I can probably get a better kicker. Seventeen point seven. I want somebody in the eights if I can help it. Let's go, Harrison Bucker, reliable kicker. And playing against Buffalo, he knows what's at stake. He knows what's at stake, man. Absolutely. Let's see. He knows what's at stake. Right, Bucker? 128. That's close to 130. He knows what's at stake, bro. Is there no one else? Yeah, no one else on the bench is projected to do higher than somebody on off on the starting lineup. And I'm content with that. Everybody over 10, except for the defense and the kicker. Moving on to column three. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. You rocking with me. You rocking with is Moolah TD. All right, danger zone. Are we still even in contention? Oh, yeah, we're third place. Have we clinched? Not yet. Okay. A and five. It's like a three way tie for second place. Three-way tie for second. Boy, I got some boys. I got some guys banged up. I don't have any running backs like that, bro. I need to play through injury, man. Ah, oh, boy, come on. What is it? Henry is okay. Henry is not in concussion protocol. That's what they said. So he's not okay. So he's fine. Isaiah, we know you got the shoulder thing. Ryan Robinson's on a on a bye week, so I couldn't put him in if I even wanted to. Najee Harris, yeah, ain't nobody running against New England defense. And then let's see if there's any other running backs available. If I have Trouble Hubbard, I'm gonna lose my mind. No, Trouble Hubbard has been picked up. It's funny. Okay, Ezekiel Elliott. Do you want to take that risk? I don't know if I'm that desperate. Um. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. If anything, I'll move a chain to number two spot since Derrick Henry is on concussion protocol. Who's available at my flex? Nobody that's projected to do higher than Isaiah Pacheco. I can probably put in Alan, Adam Thielen, but I don't trust what's going on in that in that locker room um, between the quarterback and the receiver right now. It just hasn't been consistent. Over the past few weeks, and you got an older receiver like Adam Thielen's probably just feeling a little deflated. So, 
I'll keep it as is. And I will move forward. Yeah, Dallas kick here against Philly. I expect them to kick a lot of field goals. Danger zone. We're sitting at that number three seed. Wow. We're going up against the number two seed. And boy, do we have our hands full. Team E. Eight and five. Shoot, this is a big week. What is going on? Who does he have? CJ Stroud, Alvin Kamara. Kyron Williams, once again, everybody's trusting Justin Jefferson, but A.J. Brown and Justin Jefferson, how the heck did he manage to draft those guys? Dawson Kincaid, yeah, Zach Moss, yeah, I don't think he's going to be, be anywhere close to 16.9. Um, he hasn't given that in the past five weeks, so all in the 10, so good luck there. Texans defense, yeah, we know they're going to have a big night. Um, Brandon McManus, yeah, so on my side, yeah, it says 113 on paper, but Brock, Henry, A-Chain, Samuel, uh, George Pickens, that's why. And oh, boy. George Pickens, who they playing? New England. Yeah, I don't have any other receiver available. Dang it. George Pickens or Adam Thielen? I mean, George Pickens somehow found a way to get double digits last game against Arizona. No other receivers available? That's over 10. Tank Dell is not available. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba. You think he's stepping into his role as a number two target option for Geno Smith? You have one good game against Dallas. Um, he's had a couple between week seven and nine. Over 10, over 10 points there. I don't know if I trust a rookie that much. Noah Brown had himself a pretty decent game. Maybe not. I don't know if I trust Jackson Smith and Jake but that much against San Francisco defense. Yeah, no, no way. Uh, no way, no way, no way. I don't think so. All right, so. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep in. Hmm. Adam, yeah. Let me, let me, let me, let me see. Let me. Can I give Adam Thielen one more chance though? This is like four weeks in a row. It was just two, actually. I mean, I'm being dramatic. Yeah, because who's gonna who's throwing George Pickens the ball, right? Thir backup quarterback. Um, what's my point spread now? It's a 120 at least. No, still no. I'll take it. It's gonna have to be what it is. I mean, it's a tough game. So, moving on. This field is my palace. Yeah, I like everything I see here. What's the spread? Matchup at 129.6. We already clinched this one, I believe. Yeah, second place. Can I get a clinch? I do, okay. Anybody else projected to do a little bit higher though? Than my starters, Raheem Mosert. Jerome Ford. I think they're fine there. Yeah, I like this one the way it is. Buck 29.6. I will take it. And we clinched. Take over. Jordan Love. Benching Justin Herbert. <laughs> Swallow your pride. Derek Henry, Keen Allen, Corlin Sutton, Sam Laporta, Javante Williams, Evan McPherson. I mean, he gave me a little bit of a scare, though. The other day, uh, hopefully he doesn't do that again. But yeah, I think he missed like a 47, or maybe it was like 50. It could have been pretty far, but I'll take Jake Elliott. Um, yeah, I'll take Jake Elliott. I just can't have any like hiccups, you know. I don't want anybody missing field goals out here. Uh, let's see. Am I missing anybody? DeAndre Hopkins projected to do 14.4. Or Javante Williams, who I know will get the ball against the Chargers. No, I'll give Sutton his chance there. I mean, yeah, they're going to have their hands full against Miami defense. So I like the matchup with Sutton against the Chargers more. 
you know, it's only like a 1.3 spread, only a 1.3 point spread. And what's the, what's the matchup looking like right now? 131 to 82. Yeah, that's a good one. 130, I'll take that, hit my goal. And they're 2 and 10, so let's move on. Uh, where am I at? Take over, did we? Oh, yeah, remember I was super close to getting this clinched. I lost the thing to Hawks on you. So I'm really close right there in, in, the, in the hunt right there. I'm actually in a wild card. Sitting a game ahead of... Um, the fifth seed right there. So, all right, let's play a game. What's the standings? We are pretty far down. Okay, well, we're six, so this is a huge game. This is a must-win game for us. Who are we playing? What's in the box? Where's their standings? So they're like way down there, but. Still got to respect on opponents. What's the matchup looking like? A buck 30. So looks like I already made those key changes. Let me just confirm them. Rock Purdy, Pacheco, A-Chain, Tyree Kill, Debo Samuel, Jake Ferguson at the flex. Yeah, I mean, Josh Allen's going to need to hit all his receivers in order to have a successful game against Kansas City Chiefs. I don't expect Jalen Warren to have a a big night against New England defense where they've been playing. Am I missing anybody else that can be a top receiver or flex option? I don't believe that I am. Running back, no trouble Hubbard available. Oh, so I'm going to take a peek. <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott, like I said, he only had that one week of uh, 13 point whatever. Let's see. Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, 13.2. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll stick with what I have. Yeah, I'll stick with what I have for sure. Okay, and then that's what, 130, right? Perfect. Hit my target number. Commodore, it's over. Hope it's not over, right? Did I, did I get eliminated? No, I'm in the wild, I'm in the hunt still, yeah. Not in that top four, in the hunt, six and six. Just a game behind that third and fourth seed, so another big another big game for us um, coming up this week. Team Westbrook, they are ranked right behind us. Look at that. This might be one of those situations. If you win, you're in. Don't want to fall below 500 right now. We're both six and six. Oh, what a showdown this is going to be. What's the projection looking like right now? 124 to 120. Another big game. This week in fantasy football. Uh, let's head back to my team and see what changes we can make. Brock, Bijan, Derek, Debo, Mike, Comet, Ben Ayuk, Texans defense, and Jake Elliott. Hmm. So this one said that Derek Henry is not on concussion protocol. So is he injured at all? It doesn't look like he's injured at all. Health that's questionable, so he might be still banged up. But back-to-back -back weeks over 20 points, that's huge. I'm keeping him in. And, yep, I'm going to let that rock. 124, we got CJ Shaw, Austin Eckler, Zach Moss, he won't perform. Um, Jalen Waddle. I don't think so. So we're good to go there. I'll leave that alone as well. Terminator, I think they've definitely been eliminated. But we're gonna wanna I wanna go out with a bang, bruh. Six and six. And they eliminate us, bro. That's crazy. It is what it is. Let's go out with a bang though. Team Millard. It is number two seed. How about the upset, bro? How about the upset? Brock Purdy, James Cook, Jalen Warren. Uh, I would say he's got to go, but we don't have a backup running back. James Conner's on a bye week. Devin Singletary's coming off a slow week, and he's playing against the Jets. So, Rasheed Rice in a receiver. Devontae Adams is back. Say Flowers is back. Got the Texans defense. Don't want the Chargers kicker. 
And if I can help it, Jake Elliott, I'll take him again. Um, let's see, running backs. Do I have any other running backs available? None. Oh, well, Chubba Hubbard. Chubba Hubbard, bro. Let's drop the Mario Davis since he's out right now. Chubba Hubbard. Boom. I'll take it. 117. <laughs> Should be a good game. Perfect. And then who does he have on his team? Let's see. Let, let's see. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence, he's not paying attention. Austin Eckler, Roman, uh, Raheem Mostert, Hawkinson. He's got a pretty solid squad. Uh, alrighty. But we're projected to do a little bit higher. So 17.7. Remember, I don't like that number. I like 118 or higher. Nobody else on my bench is projected to do higher than anybody up there. So we're good to go. Houston, I'm a problem. Also has been eliminated. Unfortunately, look at look at look at look at our projected numbers. Boom, a buck forty one, six and seven, trending up on like a um, you know five game win streak, and we get eliminated, bro. Isn't that heartbreaking? Just got to go in a little bit too late. View full standings. Yeah, eliminated. I mean, hey, listen, if I win and Salazar drops. I don't know. Who's Team Salas are playing? They're playing. I am right. I am right. I am right back. It's funny. The Gino, famous Gino Smith quote. So number two seed's playing number five seed. So maybe I can sneak into the playoffs. We'll see. I don't know if that's if that if that projection is a lock. You didn't say that they clinched the playoffs, right? Does it? Did it say that those guys clinched? Yeah, it doesn't say that anybody clinched yet, but maybe because I'm eliminated, doesn't show the clinch, but there's a one, two, three, four-way tie for first place. So, I'm only two games behind, so. But one game behind is Team Salazar. Okay. Philippi. Hopefully, they can get bodied. But let's see if there's any other changes I can make to my team. Dak Prescott, Chris McCaffrey, A. Chain, C. D. Lamb, Brandon Ayuk, Kyle Pitts, Carlin Sutton, and the safety defense going up against the Carolina Panthers. Absolutely. Aaron Jones still questionable. He can sit. Kyle Pitts at tight end, 8.2. Any other players available? It's fine, Kyle Pitts, you know? Um, kicker, running back, wide receiver. All right, I think we're good here. Oh, yeah, defensive Saints. Yeah, I mean, they're going against the Panthers, though, you know. So, I don't see why I would make any changes there. Yeah, anybody playing against the Panthers, that's food. Just don't play with your food. Maybe you fine. 141. I can't get over that number. That's insane. Alrighty. Snake Eyes. Snake also got eliminated. From the playoffs. I could be wrong though. Let's see. Snake Eyes. No, we're at the bottom. We're still in the hunt. It's a three way tie right here. We're sixth. Okay. We got a big week. Who are we playing? Who are you playing? The Cashman? Number one team, of course. Of course we're playing the number one seed, bro. Of course. All right, well, we're not that far off, guys. Come on. Let's reel it in. Who they got? Russell Wilson? Come on. Russell Wilson? Come on. ETN, Aaron Jones, we all know he has not been producing. So don't let those numbers fool you. Look at this. 
2.7, Yeah, that's a joke. Tyree Kill and Stephon Diggs. I don't know how our league let him um, put up those numbers. He has trouble, Hubbard. Dang it. Dang it. He took him. He took him. Oh, and I have and Justin Jefferson. Yeah, so that must mean that my team is low on uh, receivers. But I did pick up Deontay Johnson. Um, what's the projections here? 114. So, we, yeah, this is a pretty, like, big deficit right now. Um, honestly, at this point, I don't have anything to lose. <laughs> you know? Deontay Johnson coming off of a double-digit week. But I think Joshua Dobbs, if indeed Justin Jefferson is healthy, um, they find a way to get the ball in his hands. Rams defense, that's a no-go. Uh, let's see who's available. Ooh. Not a lot of options here. Lions against Chicago. What are they projected to put up? Six. Chicago Bears still find a way to put up points sometimes, I tell you. Yeah, but that's, that's better than the Rams. 6.1. I'll take it. Evan McPherson, Cincinnati kicker. I'm going to go with Jason Sanders at the kicker spot. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see now. 117. Okay. It's the best I can do with my team. Any of the quarterbacks available? Performing higher than Garrett jo John Jared Goff? <laughs> Garrett Goff. Jared Goff, no. All right. Ooh, Jake Browning. How much of a risk you trying to take? I mean, I got to go with Jared Goff and Chicago Bears, right? Yeah, I would say yes. Okay, moving on. Can you keep up? I think it's also been eliminated. I keep saying also. I think also not eliminated. But can you keep up was. Yeah, we're just too many games behind. Yeah, that's fine. Understandably so. We're going up against all in number two seed. Projected to do a little bit higher. Hopefully we can come away with the upset. Derek Henry, ETN, Brandon Ayuk, Jordan Addison, George Kittle. Yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. And we're already eliminated, so let's see if Cameron Dicker can do his thing. I'll let the Chargers kick a rock on one of my leagues, right? It's only right. It's only right. Out of respect. Out of respect. And last but not least, the high-scoring league. I don't know how I'm still in uh, the hunt. You know, it's probably because the West Coast division has been a struggle right now. Um, the East is stacked. West, we struggling. So we'll see. There's a cutoff right now. <laughs> I'm ranked rank ninth out of 12. Uh, let's see. Who am I going up against? Turn on the Jets. There's six in the East Division. So we can beat them. That'd be a good win for us. Check this to do 922 points. Kyron, Jerome, Brock, AJ, CD, Jake, yep, Tyler Lockett. Lions defense against Chicago. I'll take it. Any other defense available? Probably not. Because my team is so stacked. Or my defense is. My league, excuse me, is so stacked. Yeah, that's it, bro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it here first. You saw it, man. So this is kind of what I do. Like I said, on, um, I mean, I could try to put in, 
your boy Justin Jefferson, you know, for for and giggles, you feel me? I mean, it's a pretty big deficit, right? Let's see what the spread is. Is he paying attention? Justin Herbert, anybody? Yeah, Michael Thomas is on IR, so you know, I can I can uh, definitely take a right roll the dice here. And uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. He's not letting me drop him. So it's also not letting me move him either. So that's interesting. That is very weird. I got to figure that out. Why Justin Jefferson is locked. <laughs> On IR right now. So I have to play around with that, but yeah, projected to do 87 points. Um, but I'll figure that out. Uh, maybe to move. Yeah, no. Maybe if I just drop somebody. Nope, looks like there's an empty slot now for no reason, which is fine. Um, but yeah. So I'll figure it out and get back to you guys. But yeah, here, this is this, this is the 20 plus leagues that I'm in. Um, like I said, once again, just making sure you're checking um, the matchups. Um, who's your players going up against as far as defense? Um, who's the defense going up against as far as the offense? Check the rankings here, um, right? Opponents rankings, right? Where that uh, defense ranks in the National Football League, what their projected score is. It's really going to help you. Uh, make an educated and informed decision about your team. Um, so definitely don't be shy, man. You watching is Moolah TV on Twitch. I'm here for y'all. Look at all these leagues I'm in. You already know. Um, over three in the number one seed. Um, three in the number one seed. Ten clinched the playoffs. Three in the wild card. Three in the hunt. And only three have been eliminated. Thank you for tuning in on a late night tip. Hit me up whenever. On the side. On the chat. On IG. Let's get it. It's Mula TV, baby. Peace.